Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dig into our rippling fluids uh, material. As ever, I am in the shading tab with viewport shading enabled and I'm using the render engine, the cycles render engine, sorry. Just before I head on into the node area, I'm gonna change the light paths setting and increase them all to 12. That's because I'd be dealing with um, a transparent material. If you're not going to, you might get away with lower settings there. Now I had already applied a principled shader to this, but we are actually going to get rid of that. And the first thing that we are going to add is a wave texture. Plug that into, let's plug the factor from there into the displacement of the material output. And then we're going to grab a displacement node. So pressing shift A to grab these and search for them each time. And the factor from the wave texture needs to go into the height socket of the displacement. To that, we are going to add a mapping node and texture coordinates. So you can press Control T if you've got the node wrangler add-on available. Uh, if you haven't, then you might need to press Shift A and search for those. We're going to take the object output from the texture coordinate into the vector input of the mapping node. Now you can't see much going on here at the moment because we haven't got a surface assigned. So temporarily, I'm just going to add a bit of color. Uh, in fact, actually, let's get ourselves a shader. Let's use the glass shader. You can, of course, input the principal shader as well. That's not a problem. So you can see we've got a nice spiky thing going on here. Now a couple of changes we're going to make. On the mid level for the displacement, we're going to change it to 0.8. On the scale, 0 0.005. So you can see we've now got the bands going on. We're going to change the band's direction to diagonal and leave the wave profile as a sign. Change the scale to 10 and the dis dis uh, distortion to 10, detail to 15 and drop the roughness to zero. So you can already see it's quite wavy already. But what we're going to do is drop the scale on the mapping node to 0.5 and we're going to add a noise texture between the texture coordinate and the mapping node. Grab a mix RGB and drop that between the noise texture and the mapping node. Plug the factor from the noise texture into color one and take the object from the texture coordinate into color two. Change the dimensions to one dimension. Decrease the scale to one. Detail to 10. Roughness to zero and distortion to two. So you can now see we've got a nice rippling effect going on there. Now for the glass, we're going to change the index of refraction to 1.33. And I'm only doing this because I'm trying to simulate water here and that's the index of refraction for that. If you're trying to emulate any other material, you might want to search for the relevant index of refraction. 
Now I'm going to add a layer weight node and a mix RGB in between. Going to take the Fresnel value into the factor of the mix shader. And I'm going to change the color one to a light blue. So something with very little um, saturation. So let's say 0.55 on the hue, 0.35 on the saturation and one for the value. And then Point five five one and whatever for the darker color. In fact, let's make that value much darker. Point one. And we're going to change the distribution to GGX. And then of course, to make sure those colors apply to the object, we've actually got to connect the color into the object. Let's just make a couple of quick changes to those. There, that'll do. So you can see we've got a nice rippling effect and we've got the transparency of the glass. You could try all sorts of um, extra bits for the surface to get the finish that you want for the fluid that you're working with. But this down here is basically what creates the rippled texture. So use that and connect it to your displacement of the material output and you are a good one. Uh, let's just very quickly take a look what this would look like with a principled shader. So we could have uh, a rippled metallic surface. Drop that roughness down. A ripply ghosty effect. Anyway, play around with it, see what you get. Uh, and just before I finish, I will of course send this to render so we can see what it looks like. I'm using a thousand samples and I've got the denoise, the denoise enabled. Um, maybe try turning it off, turning it on, see what happens. But let's take a look. Okay, and there we go. There's our rippled fluids effect using displacement. I hope you found this video useful and will give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.